Good morning, everybody. We we'll praise the Lord for this retreat. I will praise the Lord for what the Lord is going to do. And as we come for this latter rain outpouring, that is the outpouring of the mighty power of God upon your life, I pray you'll never be the same again in Jesus' name. But you come with your heart and you come with faith. That's why in this faith series every morning we're talking about the spirit of faith and the gift of faith and the word of faith. And you want to open your heart, your mind, your spirit, everything you have. You want to open everything to the Lord at this time. The spirit of faith will come upon you. And then that faith will energize you and walk mightily in you. Would you close your eyes as we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you because this is a glorious day. This is a good day. The day that you have made will be glad and rejoice in it. And Lord, I pray you pour down the spirit of faith upon everyone this morning in Jesus' name. And we pray that great will be the outpouring of your blessing upon your people even today. Confirm it, O Lord, in every life. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can be seated. We're looking at 2 Corinthians chapter 4. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, you'll find exactly these words. The spirit of faith. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. We Having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. As we look at this verse of scripture, it talks about the spirit of faith. It says in verse 13, we having, we having the same spirit of faith. That means it's not just that we had each in the past. Or we're going to have each in the future. It says at this very moment, why are we confident that our problems are going to be solved? Because at this very moment, we have the spirit of faith. Why are we so certain, so sure that whatever the mountain may be, that those mountains are going to be removed this morning because we have in the same spirit of faith. How can we be so confident in the midst of all the turbulence and the storms of life that we're going to be victorious because we have in the same spirit of faith. Then it says, according as it is written. According as it is written. You see, if you are manifesting the spirit of faith, you have to live and work and move and talk and act in the spirit of faith. According to what has been written. It is what has been written in the past. Written in the word of God. The great testimonies of scripture. That shows the glory of God, the power of God, the might of God, the possibilities that we have in God. When you read all those things and you believe them and you confess them and you act on them. We, having the spirit of faith, the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed. Therefore, have I spoken. And then it says, we also. We also believe. And therefore, we speak. I pray that that same spirit of faith will work this morning in you. And it will work for you. In Psalm 116, Psalm 116, verses 9 and 10. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. Why did he say that? It was going through some real, real problems. Look at verse 3. The sorrows of death compass me. But I'm not going to talk about that. Having the spirit of faith means that you're not looking at things surrounding you. You're not looking at things that are threatening you. It says in verse 3, the sorrows of death compass me. The pains of hell got hold upon me. I found trouble and sorrow. 
you'll see that a man like that was about to die. Yes, in the natural. Looking at what people will think and looking at how people will act and looking at how people will normally behave at such a time when sickness and sorrow and pain and trouble, when they all surround such a man, you'll think that he'll pack up and go home and say goodbye, good night. There's no more hope for me. But he says in verse 9, I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I believe. Therefore have I spoken. I was greatly afflicted. I was. I was. I was greatly afflicted. But now, because of the spirit of faith and because of my confession in the spirit of faith, I can now declare that I am going to walk before the Lord in the land of the living. It's like calling those things which be not as though they were. When you have the spirit of faith, you do not look at the conditions prevailing to present. You do not look at the things that are biting hard on your life, biting hard on your family, biting hard on your finances, biting hard on your profession. You're looking at the reaching word of God according as, according as it has been reaching. Let's look at Romans chapter 4. In Romans chapter 4, reading from verse 18. Romans chapter 4, reading from verse 18. Who against hope, believed in hope. When somebody is walking and operating and acting according to the spirit of faith, it's going to be walking in hope. It's hopeful. When other people are hopeless. Because he has faith in God. And because he's walking by that spirit of faith. And because he lives his life by the spirit of faith. Hopeless situations make him hopeful. Because it says who against hope. Believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken. So shall thy seed be. And be not weak in faith. A person that has a spirit of faith will have an attitude of faith. The mind of faith. The confession of faith. The word of faith. He will not be weak in faith. Being not weak in faith. He considered not his own body. Now dead. That's how to walk by faith. That's how to live by faith. That you do not consider things natural. Things physical. Things visible. Things prevalent and present. That it, it doesn't come into your consideration at all. The things that people see. And the things that you feel within you. Because faith takes over your feeling. And faith supersedes and is superimposed on your feeling. And therefore you are not walking about by what you see. Or by what you feel. It says, be not weak in faith. He considered not his own body now dead. When he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. He staggered not. You know what it means to stagger? And you know we know that drunkards stagger. That is when wine overcomes them. They are not in control of themselves anymore. They are not in control of their life anymore. And you see, unbelief makes people stagger. They are not in control of their lives anymore. They give up. And they just tiger through life. And they think this will not work. That will not work. The family is breaking down. Business is breaking down. Life is breaking down. They stagger because of unbelief. And they are not in control of their movement. They are not in control of their plans. They are not in control of their life. They are not in control of their decisions anymore. Because they stagger through unbelief. And they are not stable. And they are not steady. And he cannot move on steadily because of this unbelief. But he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. But he was strong in faith, giving glory to God and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. Persuaded. That's how to live and that's how to walk, that's how to move by the spirit of faith. You are fully persuaded beyond a shadow of doubt. That what the Lord has promised is able also to perform. And he will perform it in your life. 
And you will be glad and happy for this day because the Lord is going to honor the spirit of faith and the confession of faith in your heart. I divide the message to three parts. Number one, having the spirit of faith. Number one, having the spirit of faith. Having the spirit of faith. Number two, hindrances to the spirit of faith. What are the things that hinder the oppression and the manifestation of the spirit of faith? Hindrances to the spirit of faith. Number three, holding on in the spirit of faith. Whatever comes, whatever betides, whatever rages, whatever storms may be there, whatever you see, whatever you feel, holding on in the spirit of faith. Number one, having the spirit of faith. Let's come back to this uh, same verse. It's in Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. And we, having the same spirit of faith, uh, when you say you have the same, what are you talking about? If you told me, uh, I have the same car, you're making comparison with another person. You're saying, I have the same car as so and so. I earn the same salary. What are you talking about? You're talking about a comparison with another person. I earn the same salary as such and such. I'm working in the same place. What do you mean? I'm working in the same place as so and so. Whenever you say something like this, we have in the same spirit of faith. You're making comparison with some other people who had faith, who manifested faith, and who lived their lives, and they lived their lives by faith. And so, who are you making comparison with then? And you need to understand this. That if you have the same faith as these people we're talking about, then you'll be able to achieve, then you'll be able to receive the same thing they achieved and the same thing they received. We have in the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed, and therefore have I spoken. We also, when you, say, when you use the word also, also, that means you're still making comparison. I believe that's what he said. And because we have the same spirit of faith, I also believe and therefore speak. Now, who are these people that they are making comparison with? Let's turn to Numbers chapter 14. We have in, we have in the same spirit of faith. The same spirit of faith. In Numbers chapter 13, I'm reading verse 30. Numbers chapter 13, verse 30. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. That man was having faith. He had another spirit within him. Another spirit within him. Uh, let's, before I come back to that, let's look at uh, Numbers chapter 14, verse 24. Chapter 14, verse 24. But my servant Caleb, because he had another spirit within him. My servant Caleb, because he had another spirit within him. What kind of spirit? Spirit of faith. What other spirit do the other people have? They had the spirit of unbelief. When, because of the unbelief, they said, we are not able. We cannot do it. It's impossible. It cannot be done. There's no way we can go into that land and overcome. But Caleb had another spirit. Different. Opposite to the spirit of unbelief. He says, yes, let's go up at once. No delay. A man that has a spirit of faith does not delay. Your miracle will not be delayed. The overflowing of the power of God into your life will not be delayed. And the answer to your prayer will not be delayed. Let us go up at once. For we are well able to overcome each. He believed in his heart. He spoke with his mouth. I believe. Therefore, I spoke. And we also believe. And therefore, we speak. You see, you cannot have the spirit of faith and keep quiet. You cannot have the spirit of faith and just fold your hand. You cannot have the spirit of faith and be immobilized. That you are paralyzed, you are immobilized, 
and your problems tie you down and you cannot move no no that will be a spirit of unbelief but when you have the spirit of faith you'll be able to say like caleb let us go up at once because we are well able to overcome each that's another spirit the spirit of faith and it says we too today after so many years have passed that spirit of faith has not changed and the oppression and the action and the demonstration of the spirit of faith has not changed that whatever the other people did in generations past by that same spirit of faith today that same spirit of faith will do the same wonders we have the same inheritance and we get to the same place and we'll be able to get into the land of promise where we have where we inherit all the promises of god for us because we have another spirit i have the spirit of faith i have the spirit of faith and therefore mountains are going to move before me and therefore problems are going to solve in my family and therefore impossibilities are going to be possible in your life give me a good amen. amen we having the same spirit of faith like caleb let us go up at once because we are well able to overcome it will overcome but you see it's not only it's not only caleb let's look at first samuel chapter 17 for Samuel chapter 17, what did he mean? Verse 37. David said, Moreover, stop there for a moment. When you have the same spirit of faith, you will say something that shows your faith. You will say something that demonstrates your faith. You will alter something that shows you have another spirit. And that you are not operating in the spirit of unbelief. But that you are operating in the spirit of faith. He said, David said, moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion. And out of the paw of the bear. He will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. He will deliver me out of the hand of this philistine he said now saul can i tell you my experience i know that you look at this man the philistine goliath as a champion and this is not my first time of contending with champions i met the champion of the forest and it's a lion, the king of the forest. And if you think about any champion, any king, anyone that is most highly above all the other animals in strength, no matter in which country, no matter in what nation, the animal, the lion, is the king of the forest, is the champion of them all. I contended with him. And without any assistance, whatever, I killed that lion. And then Saul had not finished, then his assistant. Because as you look at the forest, and as you look at all the animals, and you're looking at the wild animals, the mighty powerful animals, the ferocious animals, and the ones that kill at, his, at the snap of the hand. You think about the lion, and think about the bear. And I confronted even the one that is next to the champion in the forest. And I tore him in pieces. And here is another champion. This happens to be the champion among the Gentiles. If I conquer the, the champion in the forest. And then the one next to the champion. I conquered him too. Now coming to the forest of Gentile people. This one that is speaking against the Almighty God, I'm going to take him on. And then Saul said unto David, Go, the Lord be with you. You see, when you understand what faith is, you don't look at their height. You don't look at their stature. You don't look at their strength. You don't look at the fact that they are champions. Champions in evil. Champions in witchcraft. Champions in sorcery champions in magic 
Champions in wickedness. Champion in the world. Champions among the Gentiles. Whatever champions they are, you must remember that Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, he conquered the champion of evil, Satan. He conquered him on the cross of Calvary. And right now, because Jesus conquered that champion of evil, he has conquered for you. He conquered on your behalf. And now you can have the spirit of faith in you. And you having the spirit of faith, you'll be able to confess, you'll be able to speak out. Because Jesus overcame. I will overcome in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then in verse 45, in 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 45. Then said David to the Philistine. Now he spoke to the Philistine. You must speak to your mountain. You must speak to the problem. You must speak to that champion in the spirit world that is uh, kind of hindering your progress, hindering your family. Speak to that champion and stand on this word that you confess, that you speak out. And when you speak in your heart, then you are able to understand the power of the word of a man of faith. And of course, you're speaking every time. That's what is called self-talk. Self-talk. But you see, many times, the self-talk is like, you know, it's like spirit of unbelief. Look at this problem I have. Look at what I've been going through. I'm taking a review of my life. What have I achieved? Where have I been? Since I've been young, now I'm getting older. There's nothing to write home about. Uh-uh. You are not talking to the champion and you are not dislodging the powers of evil. You are taking in more witness to yourself and you are not spirit by this. You are not speaking by the spirit of faith. And you see now, I'm, I'm, I'm confronted with another problem. My relative, my husband is sick. Uh-huh. What do you want to say now? Speak to the champion, not speak to yourself. David was not speaking to himself. He spoke to Saul. And he spoke about the champion. He said, I'll take him on. Even though he's a champion, I'll conquer him. Speak to the mountain. Speak to the force of evil that is trying to hinder your way. Don't speak to yourself. Those discouraging words. My husband is sick now. At my age, I'm not even up to 50 years, and then I'm going to become a widow. Don't talk like that. Have the spirit of faith and speak, speak, speak to this champion. And this champion of evil, this morning will be destroyed in your life in Jesus' name. You know, all this kind of self-talk, what kind of thing is this? I let the other place of work, I come to this place of work now. And it's like the poverty that is following me, it's, why did I even leave the other place? I could even manage the salary there. These people that promised me that they were going to double my salary, now they have said there is no money. And this is the way it always happens. I've been looking at a cycle of evil in my life. Don't talk like that. Speak with the spirit of faith within you. And talk to this champion of financial difficulty I have overcome. I said I have overcome. And great will be the blessing in your life in Jesus' name. Verse 45. Then David said to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spirit and with a spear and with a shield but I come to thee stop there for a moment thou comest to me I come unto thee take the initiative away from them take the initiative the decision. Take it away from the enemy. Thou comest to me. Do I retreat because of that? Do I turn around because of that? Do I panic because of that? Am I intimidated because of that? Thou comest unto me. If you stop there, you give the opponent... 
the victory. And you give them the initiative. And you become a victim. Thou comest unto me, but I come unto thee. Take the initiative and then be on top of the problem. And be the one that now dictates how things are going to move on from now. You enemy, I take the initiative from you. And I take the authority from you. And I decide what happens from now on. It says, now you come. What, do you, what are you coming with? Analyze their power. And analyze your own power. And compare the power they have and the power you have. And compare the authority they have and the authority you have. And compare the strength of their weapon and the strength of your weapon. Let's look at what he said. Thou comest to me with a sword, natural. With a spear, natural. With a shield, natural. Do you know many people that have carried spears and shields and they died in the past? Yes, I do know. Either in Bible history or contemporary history. But because those are natural weapons, and natural weapons don't always succeed. When the flesh is fighting against the spirit, the spirit will always win. When the carnal is fighting against the divine, the divine will always win. When Satan is fighting with the almighty God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, the creator of the heavens and the earth will always win. And when somebody that brings the spear and the shield and then the sword, when that person is fighting with a person that comes in the name of the Lord God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob, the one that comes in the name of the Lord will always win. Verse 40. Five again, thou comest to me with a sword, with a shield, and with a shield. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. The God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. I can imagine. Uh, the Philistine, the champion of the, of the Gentiles, of the Philistines saying, but I cannot see him. Ah, don't be fooled. Because invisible powers are always more powerful than visible powers. Think about it. Invisible powers are always more powerful, more mighty, greater than visible powers. The things we don't see they are more powerful than the things we see. We can see your shield. We can see your spear. We can see your sword. But you cannot see the God of Israel. And he's a mighty warrior. And because you cannot see him, that should show you already. The invisible is more powerful than the visible. And that invisible power of the almighty God will walk in your life today. It says, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord. You know that those spears and shields and swords, sometimes they get blunt. And you have to go away and sharpen them again. But the name of the Lord never gets weary, never gets weak. It's never blunt. And it never fails. And then in verse 46, this day will the Lord deliver thee into mine hand. And I will smite thee. Remember once again, we have in the spirit of faith. We, we believe, therefore have we spoken. A person having the spirit of faith will confess and will pronounce and will proclaim the result before we see it. You see it by faith. You know it by faith. Just like I know you are going to be healed this morning. Just like I know, all the bondages of your life, they're going to be broken this morning. Just like I know that the barren there this morning, the Lord will give your own children. Just like I know that impossibilities are becoming possible in your life this morning at the time of prayer, you see all those things crumbling down. All those things fleeing away from your life because we say it. Because we've seen it. We say it before it happens. And because we know it's going to happen, that's the reason why we declare it. Because the 
power of God, the name of Christ, the name of the Lord, a mighty tower, and the righteous runneth into it, and he is saved. Look at that, verse 46 again, this day, everybody say this day, this day once again, this day for the last time, this day. You see, when you speak with the spirit of faith, you are not prolonging the time, and you are not extending the time, and you are not wondering, when is it going to happen? You decide it. I told you, you take the initiative away from the hand of the champion of the Philistines. You take the initiative away from the hand of the opponent. And then you have the initiative now, and you say, this Day, well, the Lord delivered thee into mine hand, and I will smite thee, and take thine head from thee, and I will give the carcasses of the hosts of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air, and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Your friends will know you've gone somewhere. Your enemies will know you've been somewhere. And even your relatives that are wondering, when are you going to be free from this? When you get back home, they will know that God has touched you. And something definite has happened in your life in Jesus' name. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword. And spare, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. The battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. Remember once again, we having the same spirit of faith. The same, the same, the same spirit of faith. And I told you, when you say you have the same spirit of faith, you are making comparison with another individual. We'll see in the case of Caleb. We'll see in the case of David. Now in 2 Kings chapter 6. 2 Kings chapter 6. We have in the same spirit of faith. 2 Kings chapter 6. What did in verse 16? And he answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. Spirit of faith. We have in the same spirit of faith. We believe, therefore have we spoken. We also believe, and therefore speak. Look at Elisha here, telling his own servant, What's the background to this story? Look at it from verse 15 now. From verse 15, And when the servant of the man of God was risen early, and gone forth, behold, and host compassed the city with horses and chariots. The host, the host, compassed the city with horses and chariots. Once again, make a comparison. Once again, make an analysis. It says, an host compassed the city. But is there any other host? Of course, yes. Because the Lord God Almighty is referred to as the God of hosts. And as the host of the armies of heaven. Don't, don't forget any time that if you see something in the fish seeker, there is something greater in the spiritual. If you see something in the natural, there is something greater in the supernatural realm. Every time you see a host, then you become afraid. Because you are not making analysis and comparison. There is a physical, natural, visible host here. Then there is another one, the host of the armies of heaven, invisible and mighty and powerful, unconquerable. And when you make that comparison, then you have the spirit of faith. You'll be able to speak of the spirit of faith in verse 15. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? Look at this host. And then he said, you're looking at the wrong thing, at the wrong direction, at the wrong group. Look at verse 16. And he said, fear not, 
For they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man. And he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. Have you seen verse 15? The host compassed the city both with horses and chariots. Have you seen verse 17? In verse 17, horses and chariots too, but of fire round about Elisha. You see, eh, there are people, they don't see only one host of horses and chariots, but they don't look on the other side to see the spiritual, the supernatural, the unconquerable host of chariots and horses of fire round about Elisha, round about the people of God. And when they came down to him, Elisha preached unto the Lord and said, Smite these people. I pray thee with blindness, and he smote them with blindness according to the word of Elisha. We have overcome. Because you see, we have the same spirit of faith. The same, the same, the same spirit of faith as that man of God, Elisha. That even when you see the host, the natural host, the people that come as if they're going to take you and destroy you, then you understand that you have the same spirit of faith as Elisha, and you know that they that are with you are greater. They are more than they that be with them. And then because of that, you know that you are going to overcome. You have overcome already. In Matthew chapter 8, we have in the same spirit of faith, Matthew chapter 8, I'm reading to you from verse 8. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. Speak the word only. That's the spirit of faith. We believe, so have we spoken. We also believe, and so we speak. Speak the word only. And my servant shall be healed. And then this morning, as you have the same spirit of faith, you are saying, Speak the word only, I will be healed. Speak the word only, my wife will be healed. Speak the word only, my husband will be healed. Speak the word only, and that mother in the hospital shall be healed. Because we have it, the same spirit of faith will speak according to what is written and because we speak that word of faith it will be done it will be accomplished in jesus name now hindrances to the spirit of faith hindrances to the spirit of faith if we have the same spirit of faith what hinders our own faith from working from operating to start with, did you hear what Elisha told his own servant? He said, fear not, fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. Fear not. Why did he start with fear not? Because if you allow fear to rise up in the heart, the spirit of fear will overwhelm, overshadow overcome overthrow the spirit of faith if you allow the spirit of fear in you that spirit of fear will overthrow overwhelm overcome that spirit of faith that's why you need to understand one thing one of the things that hinder the spirit of faith is the spirit of fear in second timothy chapter 1 verse 7 2 Timothy, chapter 1, verse 7. For God has not given us the spirit of fear. God has not given us the spirit of fear. When somebody is sick, and every time he's thinking and dreaming of death, what kind of spirit is operating there? That is the spirit of fear. When you have a dream in the night, 
And then you wake up in the morning and you interpret it to mean that defeat, death, or disease has now come. What's separating the spirit of fear? When your boss calls you and he just makes a minor correction. This is not right. Please don't do like this again. And immediately when you leave that boss, you are thinking of the termination of your appointment. What's operating you? That, that the spirit of fear. The boss did not even talk about termination of appointment. And when something happens and they bring news from home, and immediately you are thinking, oh, those people are risen, they are risen up again. They hated my father, they hated my people. Now they are going to jump on me and they are going to do whatever they can do, their magical power, traditional power to destroy me. What's operating you? That's the spirit of fear. And it's a hindrance to the operation of the spirit of faith. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Let's look at First John chapter 4. In First John chapter 4, we're looking at verse 3 and we're looking at verse 6. First John chapter 4, verse 3. And every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. This is that spirit of Antichrist. This is that spirit of Antichrist. What spirit fight against Hinder the manifestation of the spirit of faith. Number two, the spirit of Antichrist. Christ can do all things. He says, I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. And then when you deviate from that, and you say, I don't think that this one is going to be solved by the Lord Jesus alone. If a person does not run around to do this and do that, I don't think that this one is not a problem for prayer. The spirit of Antichrist operating in, ma in many lives. And when, you know, so Jesus says something, and then you contradict it, you are anti. You are opposed. You are contradictory to the way of Christ, to the watch of Christ, and to the plan of Christ, and to the promise of Christ. That's the spirit of Antichrist. But when you are in unity with Christ, and you confess what is said, and you confess what he did, and you proclaim what he achieved on the cross of Calvary, that's the spirit of Christ and the spirit of faith, but the spirit of Antichrist will Hinder the, uh, the oppression of the spirit of faith. Look at verse 6. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth us not. Hereby we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. The spirit of error. The spirit of error. That also works against the spirit of faith. And when you get into false doctrine, they must say, you know, add some water, holy water, before the blood of Jesus will work, spirit of error. We must add some candle and incense before, this, before the name of Jesus will effectively work, the spirit of error. And we must go and see some people that will carry out this for us and carry out that for us. And maybe go to the cemetery, the graveyard, before we can be free from this, the spirit of error. When you allow the spirit of error to operate in your life, it contradicts, it overwhelms, it conquers, it destroys the spirit of faith. It tells us in first in Second Corinthians, Second Corinthians, uh, we're looking at Second Kings, rather Second Kings chapter seven. In Second Kings chapter seven, I'm reading from verse one, from verse two. Then Elisha said, "Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord: Tomorrow, about this time, shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel." And two measures of barley for a, for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. Then a lord on whose hand the king leaned answered the man of God and said, Behold, if the Lord will open the windows of he in heaven, might this thing be? When the spirit of faith is talking through a man of God, a woman of God, encouraging us, telling us, this is the word of the Lord. By this time tomorrow, all these mountains you see, you'll see them no more. Give me a good amen. Yeah. 
If somebody now, a Lord, when it says a Lord, as somebody with high position, high position in the world, high position in the government, high position with the people that matter in this world, if they say, uh, even if the Lord will open the windows of heaven, even if Jesus Christ will come back, even if all those mighty great prophets of old will come back, do you think that these can be the spirit of unbelief? And the spirit of unbelief will not allow the spirit of faith to work. It will, of course, the word of God is going to work in all, all other people. But it's the man that has the spirit of unbelief that is going to hinder himself from getting the blessing of the Lord. Because if you read this account, the blessing still came for the people of God. It was just the person having the spirit of unbelief that it did not work for. That's why it says, and it said, Behold, thou shalt see it with thine eyes, but shall not eat thereof. God is going to pour out showers of blessing. This morning, many people are going to be delivered from long time oppression and sicknesses. And we will see it with our light, with our eyes, and we're going to be partakers of it in Jesus' name. Hindrances to the spirit of faith. And let's look at uh, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 16. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 16. I'm reading from verse 16. Acts 16, 16. And it came to pass as we went to prayer. A certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us. Don't worry about what the lady said. But something very important here. They were going to the place of prayer. Understand that. It came to pass as we went to prayer. It came to pass as we went to prayer. A damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us. Can you think about that? Going to the place of prayer and going with expectation and going with faith and going with excitement and going with the promises and the possibilities of faith. You're going to a place of prayer and then a lady, a damsel with the spirit of divination met us. What's the purpose? Why? Because we're going to a place of prayer. And this is where we expect God will do mighty things, great things. How come? That it's a lady, a damsel, with the spirit of divination that met us. And then wants to engage our attention. She had brought her masters much gain by so saying. The same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. Isn't that commendation? Yes, from the lady having the spirit of divination. But don't you think that when somebody is really not with you, who is not part of you, is giving you commendation, we don't call that commendation, we call it flattery. When somebody opposed to you, begins to flatter you, even though the things they are saying, they might say the right thing about you. And it's commendable, ordinarily. But because you don't have the same spirit, then it's no more commendation. It is flattery. And he wants you to become their friend. And to join them. And to engage in conversation with them. Don't forget your goal. You are going to a place of prayer. And this damsel is not part of you. And all she's saying, these are the men, the great men of God. They show unto us the way of salvation. Don't mind, don't, don't answer. And don't respond to that because it's just flattery. And it is flattery that is coming from the wrong direction. And then we're told in verse 18, and this she did many days. 
This she did many days. Every time we're going to the place of prayer, this is exactly what this woman will do. What this damsel will do as they went to the place of prayer. These are the men of God who show unto us the way of salvation. And she did this many days. But Paul being grieved. Are you grieved with commendation? Are you grieved with praise? Because it's flattery. Because it's not real. Because it's phony. Because it's counterfeit. And because it's coming from the wrong spirit. That's why he was grieved in his spirit. He maintained, he maintained a spirit of faith. And even though the flattery, the commendation coming from the wrong source was coming to him, he knew that this is not from the same spirit. And he was grieved. He turned and said to the spirit, to the spirit of divination, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out the same hour will overcome in Jesus' name. Hindrances to the spirit of faith, the spirit of fear, the spirit of the Antichrist, the spirit of error, the spirit of unbelief, the spirit of divination. In First Corinthians chapter two, First Corinthians chapter two, hindrances to the spirit of faith. First Corinthians chapter two. I'm reading from verse twelve. Now we have received. Not the spirit of the world. Not the spirit of the world. That's another thing that hinders the operation, the exercise of the spirit of faith. The spirit of the world. What's the spirit of the world? Seeing is believing. If I don't see it, I don't believe it. If I don't see it, I don't accept it. Even when other people are being healed, even when other people are being delivered, ah, I think they just uh, told them to tell that kind of testimony. I don't accept, I don't see, I don't see it's real. It's the spirit of the world. And the spirit of the world will contradict the spirit of faith. It says in verse 12 now, we have received not the spirit of the world. But the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Romans chapter 11, we're looking at verse 8. Romans 11, verse 8. According as it is written, God has given them the spirit of slumber. The spirit of slumber. You see, eh, there are some people, they are wide awake before the preaching. They are very, very active and they are alive and they are awake and everything appears to be alright. They are even extroverts when it comes to behaving and living among their neighbors. And even at the retreat, before the preaching comes, and before the time of prayer comes, they're much awake at a large. But at the time of prayer, at the time of the preaching of the word, when a particular word is going to come out, that will solve their problem. That will destroy the powers of the enemy. That will break the yoke in their life. That's when they go to sleep. And their mind is dull. And their mind is not responsive to the watch of God. The spirit of slumber. And then when we are all standing and we are saying in the name of Jesus, this is the time of your breakthrough and the time of your miracle. That's when they sleep up. It's when we finish prayer, they then wake up and when they hear the clapping and the praise and the hallelujah of the people of God, that's when they wake up and say, what's happening here now? Because they were of the spirit of slumber. It hinders people from getting the miracle. I pray you will not be hindered. In Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13. I'm reading from verse 14. Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13 verse 14. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. 
which says, By hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand. And seeing ye shall see, and shall not perceive. For this people's heart is wax gross, and their eyes, their ears are dull of hearing. And their eyes they have closed. Lest at any time they should see with their eyes. And hear with their ears. And should understand with their heart. And should be converted. And I should heal them. Uh, this, this is a kind of a will. Self will. I hear. I will not believe. I see. I don't want to see. I don't want to understand. I don't want to even consider it. That will hinder the spirit of faith. Even if a Moses came to pray for you, if you say, no, not today, I'm not going to receive it through this man. Even if an Elijah and Elisha came to pray for you, no, I've made up my mind. It's not through this one. I'm going to receive my miracle. I'm going to get you another time. Their eyes, they have closed. How many of the Pharisees brought their wives who were sick to Jesus to be healed? Not one. How many of the Sadducees brought their children to Jesus to be healed? Not one. How many of those religious people, high priests, brought their sick relatives to Jesus to be healed? Not one. Their eyes, they are closed. That they will not see with their eyes and they will not understand with their mind. Lest I should heal them, lest they should be converted. I pray you will not be like that. Hebrews chapter 4. In Hebrews chapter 4, we're, asked, we're reading from verse 2. Hebrews chapter 4, reading from verse 2. Here we're learning what hinders the spirit of faith from walking. It says, for unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. The word, the same word, the same gospel, which is the power of God unto salvation, unto healing, unto deliverance, unto removing our mountains, that same word of faith was preached unto them. But it did not mix with faith in the heart of those that heard it. Therefore, it did not profit them. Number one, we have seen having the spirit of faith. Number two, we have seen hindrances to the spirit of faith. Number three, holding on in the spirit of faith. As we pray this morning, you'll hold on to your answer. You'll hold on to your miracle. Holding on in the spirit of faith. In Second Corinthians again, chapter 4, verse 13. Second Corinthians chapter 4 verse 13. We, having the same spirit of faith. We, having the same spirit of faith. According as it is written. That is now, the spirit of faith will think according as it is written. The spirit of faith will expect according as it is written. The spirit of faith will stand according as it is written. The spirit of faith will speak according as it is written. The spirit of faith will lay and move and just have, you don't have any care. You don't have any concern. You don't think about a problem. You are not thinking about impossibilities because you are living, you are acting, you are talking, you are speaking according to the spirit of faith. It says, we then having the same spirit of faith according as it is written. I believe. Therefore, have I spoken? We also believe and therefore speak. And you need to hold on to that spirit of faith. And keep on holding on. And the answer will come. In Hebrews chapter 3. Verse 6. Hebrews chapter 3 verse 6. But Christ as a son. Over his own house. Whose house we are. Whose house we are. If we hold fast. The confidence. And the rejoicing of hope. Firm unto the end. 
What does that mean? It means at the time of prayer, while your attention is focused on God, while your faith is centered on Christ, while the expectation is very high, you have confidence. That's great. After the prayer, during the day, in the afternoon, when Satan might come to test you, and to see where your confidence is, whether the confidence is still there or not, the same excitement you had in the morning, the same joy you had in the morning, the same expectation you had in the morning, you carry on in that same expectation. And when contrary circumstances will come, when contrary wind will blow, that the same confidence you had at the time of prayer, the prayer of faith, you carry on in that same confidence. And when challenges will come, to challenge your excitement and your expectation, that even when those challenges come, you hold on to your confidence and your rejoicing of the hope firm unto the very end. And you will see the end of Satan. You'll see the end of the problem. But you need to hold on, hold on in the spirit of faith. I want you to look at Hebrews chapter 6 verse 12. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 12. That she be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. That is, your concern is not just to pray, it's to inherit the promises. Your challenge is not just to shout the name of Jesus, it's to inherit the promises. Your challenge is not just to be excited, to be happy, it's to inherit the promises. And therefore, with patience and with faith and with hope in the Lord, you, you get on steady and you say, yes, thank God for the shouting. Thank God for the excitement and thank God for the joy and thank God for the prayer. But I'm going to inherit the promise by faith and by patience to inherit the promises. Hebrews chapter 10. In Hebrews chapter 10, reading from verse 35. Cast not away therefore your confidence. Holding on in the spirit of faith. Cast not away your confidence which has Great recompense of reward. For ye have need of patience that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. That blessing will come and will not tarry. That redemption will come and will not tarry. The breaking of the yoke will come and will not tarry. Now, the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Thank God we're not drawing back. We're holding on in the spirit of faith. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. Keep on holding on. The answer must come. I said the answer must come. Luke chapter 11. Luke chapter 11, reading from verse 5. Luke 11, verse 5. And he said unto them, Which of you shall have a friend? And shall go unto him at midnight and say unto him, Friend, lend me three loaves. For a friend of mine is in his journey, is come to me, and I have nothing to search before him. And he from within shall answer and say, Trouble me not, the door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give thee, I say unto you. Though he will not rise and give him because he is his friend, yet because of his importunity, holding on in the spirit of faith, because of his importunity, that you will not give up. That healing, you are going to have the healing. That deliverance, you are going to have the deliverance. The solution to your problem, this solution, I must have this solution to the problem. And Satan will not contradict my decision. 
And evil spirits will not contradict my decision. And the hard-heartedness of men or women will not contradict my decision. This problem will be solved, must be solved. When you hold on like that, because of your importunity, holding on in the spirit of faith, the answer will come. That's why it says in that verse 5, it says that this person came saying, just three loaves I need. Because of this friend I want to serve. It's not even a personal need, really. It's a need of the other person that I need to serve. And then he says, trouble me not. Then he says, though he will not rise and give him because of his, he's his friend, yet because of his importunity, he will rise and give him as many as he needeth. And today, if you are going to hold on in the spirit of faith, the Lord will give you as much as you need. And I say unto you, ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone, 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 are you part of that? Say everyone. Say, I'm going to receive. Because everyone that asketh receiveth. Say it aloud. Because everyone that asketh receiveth. If that is the word of God, then you are sure that this morning is the morning of breakthrough for you. And he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh, it shall be open. Your time has come this morning in Jesus' name. Now it says, if his son shall ask bread of any of you, that say, Father, will he give him a stone? No. Or if he ask a fish, will he give for a fish a serpent? No. If he ask an egg, will he, will he offer him a scorpion? No. If he then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more? Shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? How much more? How much more? How much more? This is a great day. And it's the day of your breakthrough. It's the day of solution to your problem. It's the day of the moving of your mountain. But you must hold on in the spirit of faith. Matthew chapter 15. Matthew chapter 15. Reading from verse 21. Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coasts of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coasts and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. But he answered her, Not a word. Remember, even when it appears the answer has not come, keep on holding on in the spirit of faith. He answered her not a word, and his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away. For she cries after us. Even when men or women or people, even if when they seem to be contrary to you, opposed to you, as if they want to hinder your blessing, keep on holding on in the spirit of faith. And then we are told, but he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Even when it appeared, the promise you are trying to stand on, the devil is saying, that promise is not for you. And Bible interpreters are saying, that promise is not for you. That is not for this dispensation. It is not for a Gentile. It is for the children of Israel. Even when they are saying that, you hold on in the spirit of faith. Then she came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not me to take the children's bread and cast it to dogs. Even when the Lord himself is saying, You are not worthy. Because look at the dog, look at your life, look at the past, look at your life, look at your behavior, look at your life. You still keep on holding on. Lord, whatever you want me to correct, I will correct. But help me. 
deliver me, set me free. Holding on in the spirit of faith will solve your problem this morning. And then she said, it, 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 is, it is not me to give the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. She said, truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith, be it unto thee as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. That's your, this is your own hour. This is your own time. Remember, you have the spirit of faith already. Let it come out. Confess it. Proclaim it. And stand on the unchanging word of the Almighty God. Don't allow any hindrance. The spirit of fear. The spirit of error. The spirit of antichrist. The spirit of unbelief. The spirit of divination. The spirit of the world. The spirit of slumber. Or the spirit of self-will. The spirit of unbelief. Don't let that come in. This is your day. And this is your hour. And the miracle. And the blessing you have been expecting for a long time. It is this morning fulfillment is going to come. And you keep on holding on until it is done. It will be done. Why don't you rise up? Why don't you rise up now? And with the spirit of faith, with the spirit of faith, this is the hour of prayer. This is the time of prayer. Don't you have a need? Don't you have a request? Don't you have a prayer item? Don't you have something you want the Lord to do for you this morning? Is there not a mountain you want him to move away? Is there not something in your body, something in your soul, something in your spirit? You want the Lord to take care of this morning saying, Oh Lord, I come with the spirit of faith. The spirit of faith like Caleb's faith. Like David's faith, like Elisha's faith, the spirit of faith, like the men of old. And I'm going, not going to allow any hindrance at all. Lord, I come to you this morning. Lord, I come to you this morning. I come in the spirit of faith. This champion of the enemy camp will be destroyed. This champion of the enemy camp of the Gentiles, of the Philistines must be destroyed this morning. And those hindrances must be taken away. We have the same spirit of faith. And therefore we shout aloud. And therefore we cry aloud. And therefore we speak unto this mountain. Be thou removed and it will be gone. The same spirit of faith. I will overcome. The same spirit of faith. We are well able. The same spirit of faith. I am healed. The same spirit of faith. My mountains are taken away. The same spirit of faith. My servant is healed. My husband is healed. My wife is healed. My children are healed. The same spirit of faith. I've got the job. The same spirit of faith. The Lord is answering my prayers right now. The same spirit of faith. Don't allow the Antichrist. To oppose the word of God or the will of God or the promise of God in your life. The same spirit of faith. The same. The same. The same. The same spirit of faith. It will get you healing. It will get you deliverance. It will get you the power you need. It will give you the authority. It will give you the might of the Lord. The same spirit of faith. Don't allow error. Don't allow the Antichrist. Don't allow divination. Don't allow the ceremonies of false religion to hinder you. The same spirit of faith. Open your mouth and tell the Lord. Be like Abraham. Counting those things would be not as though they were. Counting those things with be not as though they were. The healing is there. The deliverance is there. The provision is there. All the promises of God are yes and amen to the people having the same spirit of fear, the same spirit of faith.
believe that this is your day and this is your hour the hour of victory the hour of deliverance and the hour of the manifestation of the power of God in your life on your behalf the time has come the day has come when the Lord himself if you are holding on holding on holding on in the spirit of faith the day has come the hour has come when the Lord himself will honor your faith remove the mountain break every yoke and destroy the works of the devil we have in the same spirit of faith we have in the same spirit of faith this is the time and the place of prayer don't allow a man a woman with the spirit of divination to come across your way or to hinder you or to make you lose your hold on the power of the lord on the provision of the lord on the promise of the lord the same spirit of faith move on move on move on away from those hindrances and get what the lord has given you today this day will be your day of breakthrough, your day of miracle, the day of power, and the day when the Lord himself, by his mighty manifestation, will manifest his power in your life. This is the day. Let it be. Let it be. Let it be. Let it be. And speak in the spirit of faith. We believe, and therefore speak. We believe and therefore speak. Conquer that Goliath this morning. Overcome those hosts of horses and chariots this morning. They that be with us are more than they that be with them. They that be with us are more than they that be with them. The power that supports us is greater than the power that opposes us. The power that works in us and works for us is greater than the power that is working against us. We are more than conquerors through the name of the Lord Jesus Christ who conquered the devil and death and disease on the cross of Calvary. We are more than them. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Come forth with the spirit of faith. And your problems are solved this morning. Take the initiative. Don't leave the initiative in the hand of Satan. Don't leave the initiative in the hand of the opposers of the gospel. Don't leave the initiative in the hands of your enemy. Stand up and speak out. Speak against your mountain. Be an overcomer. Be more than a conqueror. You have overcome already. In all these things, we're more, 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 more than a conqueror. Let that power, the power of faith, work in a dynamic way in your heart, in your life this morning. This is the day, the day of the answer to your prayer and your long time expectation.
In Jesus' name we pray. How many people are trusting the Lord today and you are standing there in the spirit of faith? Knowing that faith cannot fail. And you are not allowing fear in your heart for God has not given us the spirit of fear. But he has given us the spirit of love, of power and of a sound mind. And because we stand on the unchanging promises of the unchanging God, even this morning, we know He is going to answer our prayer. And we know that this will be the day when those mountains collapse and they get away and they flee away from your life in Jesus' name. Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you this morning because our confession is a confession of men and women of faith. Lord, we pray today that all the problems that have confronted us from our past until this time, they collapse and they get away from us in Jesus' name. We already today have the spirit of faith and we declare it is well in Jesus' name. We proclaim we are healed in Jesus' name. We declare we have overcome in Jesus' name. Lord, we have in the spirit of faith. We believe and therefore we speak today. The barrenness is cancelled in Jesus' name. That all those attacks and the arrows of the enemy, today they are cancelled. Today they are broken. Today they are destroyed in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, upon any brother, any sister, there, any man, any woman, any boy, any girl there, I pray you touch them now. And Lord, I declare with the spirit of faith that they are healed in Jesus' name. They are delivered in Jesus' name. And the power of Satan is broken from their lives in Jesus' name. Everyone hearing the sound of my voice now, I pray that the miracle power of God will flow into their bodies now. All mountains in their lives, you roll away in Jesus' name. Confirm it to Lord. Confirm it to Lord. Confirm it to Lord. And let there be shout of praise in the camp of the people of God in Jesus' name. We accept the answer. We receive the miracle. We take it right now. And we're going to keep on holding on in this spirit of faith. We'll never be denied in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, because we know that you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Everybody, glory, glory. Glory, 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 hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. His truth is marching on. Glory, 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 glory. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Amen. I got my miracle already. And people will see it on me. I'm holding on in the spirit of faith. I will never fail. Amen.